Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kev Baker, and this is the first Kev Baker show of the week, right here on your favourite network, the one and only Truth Frequency Radio, www.tfrlive.com. Of course, you might be tuned in, in the car, so you might be listening on iHeartRadio, you might be chilling on the beach if you're down in Australia, middle of your summer, not that I'm jealous too much. So yeah, however you're tuned in, wherever you're tuned in, seriously, I can't thank you all enough. And I'm really, really grateful that you've all tuned in tonight and you're going to be really pleased because the world around me it is going absolutely crazy and more nonsensical, not just by the day, but by the hour, it would seem. Not just the mainstream news, but even walking to the shops today, some of the sights I've seen and some of the things that were going on it's almost as if I need some order to the chaos that's going on around me and in my mind. So what better time for all of us to enjoy? You ready for it? Yep, yep. she's back all the way from Silicon Valley and she always makes sense of the world for me anyway. And that is our nano girl. Nano, it's Monday. We're going to kick off the week in style and I can't be more happy to have you back. Well, thank you for the awesome always wonderful introduction i love it i love coming on your show um we were just saying that it was just yesterday we were doing the economist and uh i was watching uh was it Theresa may answer the questions to the uh house of commons today that was her right well depends what timeline you're on sometimes when you squint your eye it's almost <laughs> you're in an alternative universe and it could be somebody called terry may but i get you yeah um well she yes and it, exactly and uh i i happened to watch a little bit of it because uh that was one of the predictions of the economist that she was driving her little british car into the apocalypse of the four horsemen so i thought well i didn't want to miss that so that now, was kind of fun another article about her today that she won't be attending this year's davos you know where all these globalists usually get together for glasses of champagne and prawn volley vons and things like that and they talk over the world order well it's called globalization 4.0 this year nano so i don't think T- terry mayhem or Theresa may whatever name you want to give that thing i don't think she'd be too popular there especially after two years ago giving this big huge kind of a uh, grandstand speech about brexit and how well it would go under her kind of leadership uh, uh, uh. She's having a little bit of a difficult time. And as I understand it, Trump and Macron are not showing up to that as well, correct? Yeah, it's called Globalization 4.0. And like I say, I think most of the people below the billionaire class are sick to death of hearing about EU, global governance, send of sovereignty. You can see that playing out on the streets of France, right? So the article I was reading was saying this is really like just a a get-together, a networking kind of gig now, because nobody's interested in Davos. Yeah, I... Well, <laughs> and least people think that I'm picking on the UK. We've had some gala events over here at the last couple of days. So uh, President Trump gave a little speech on Saturday and kind of, you know, gave the Democrats everything they said they wanted, and, in, and then he said, I also would like to have the wall. And before he even gave his speech, uh, our little Miss Nancy Pelosi said, no, heck no, heck, 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 heck no. So that's where we are. Um, She's like I'll, that crazy kind of auntie that you kind of cringe when you see her turning up at a wedding or something because you just know she's going to drink one sherry too many. You know what I get a kick out of? This is so mean. Should I say it? Oh, of course I should. Yes. Um, <laughs> She gave a press conference about how uh, supposedly he, you know, so he, last week, she was going to take off on the military jet, and an hour before, he said, no, you're not, because I command the jets. I'm in charge of the military jets. Get your, you know, little vampire butt off of the jet, and returned her to her uh, place in Congress, and then put her luggage in front of her door. So she gave a, a little speech about how Trump had given the location and made her it was dangerous and she would have taken a private flight but he put her in jeopardy and for the very first time you could kind of see her from a different angle the press the cameras usually 
focus on her face forward so you get to see her best side. And then you saw the stuff from the side and it's like, you know, a couple of facelifts later. I'm being really catty right now, Gav. I'm, I'm just shocked that Hillary Clinton didn't offer her a shot of her broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must still be kicking about in Washington somewhere, you know? I've, I've, I've uh, elevated everyone in Congress to the vampire state now, the vampire status. And to me, they just have gone from skeletal to just vampires. And I go back to the – one of my favorite vampire shows ever was the one with Kate Beckinsale. And uh, she was a vampire. And uh, Bill Nighy is one of the old, ugly, creepy ones on the ground. And he's under the grate. And they just drip blood in there, and then he comes alive. And that's kind of what I feel like when they go on a break. They just put him in the crate in the underneath this metal thing, and they drip blood into him. And then, if anyone watched the funeral of George Bush, and I'm not making oh, like that guy, but if you've seen all those ex presidents in the front row, yeah. what Nan was talking about there, that sums them up perfectly. Bill Clinton looked like he'd just been dragged out from underground from some crypt or a coffin or something. The dude looks hellish, Nano. I know. And again, she looks great. Hillary looks fantastic. But again, if you have, we all have doubles, we're going to look <laughs> fabulous. Which Hillary was looking great, though. But, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe they could start the first official state of vampires. And that's not the only kind of first off for states that we're going to be talking about tonight. Because I've been looking forward to getting into this ever since we kind of um, bandied it about after one of our live streams recently. And before we get into this new nation that we're going to be talking about, Nano, we first have to address something else of very high significance in the new world order power structure. Again, it's over in your country, and it's the United Nations, right? And I often watch, you know, the parliament over here. You were watching it today. And it is, it's like a total puppet show, but not as much as the United Nations. I find something really comical about that place. It's like the Muppets or something. They're all sitting there with their big headphones on, all the different flags and things. And I just find that, I don't know, you know what I'm like with politicians and politics, Nano. But the UN is where we're starting tonight. Yeah, so basically, uh, Kevin and I are going to be talking about space and business and where we, the business aspect of space. Um, and uh, yep, I'm blaming this to, this show on Kev tonight. So, but I what I mentioned to him before the show is I thought we should just go over the UN treaties very quickly because that kind of gives you a basis of where all of these businesses are going to kind of launch themselves and where they give themselves the power to do what they're doing, power, permission, um, whatever word you want to use. So after the launch of the Sputnik, and I'm going to make this real quick. So basically, after the launch of the Sputnik in 1957, the UN General Assembly created an ad hoc, this is from their site, by the way, Committee on the Peaceful Uses Peaceful Use of Outer Space. It's called Copious. C O P U O U S. They love those little. I don't know how you could ever keep up with all of them. Anyway, it, the whole thing boils down to countries versus companies. So they actually got uh, a number of people to agree that they would have they would have space. They would do peace in space. Countries, the countries agreed that they would do peace in space, wouldn't necessarily use it for war, blah, blah, blah. Now, remember, this is 1957. Fast forward in 1984. So in order to address the fact that they didn't include businesses and they wanted to plug the loophole, right? So the UN attempted to plug the loophole by introducing the ill-fated, as they say, moon treaty. The treaty forbids exploitation of extraterrestrial resources, which includes for any anyone, also individuals and corporations. So when it came up for a vote, out of the 185 UN member nations, only six supported it. <laughs> and as of today, as far as I can tell, individuals and corporations can go ahead and do and exploit the natural resources out there 
quote unquote, not the com- countries. Um, so this is where the people like we're going to talk to you tonight kind of get their permission to do what they're doing. And some of them are going to, and a couple of them are using the UN to become legitimate sovereign entities. So we'll go from there. And so, Kev, if you want to introduce who we're going to talk to you about first, it'd be awesome. Well, Nano, that, that takes us, that launches us towards the first space nation of Asgardia. And I'm quite sure that it was you that was on the show here probably a couple of years ago when this whole story about the space nation are are uh, Asgardia can hardly Asgardia. I'm excited about talking about this place I can't get the word out but yeah I remember us talking about it so long ago and that's exactly where we're going to be starting tonight and this of course is the brainchild of a Russian billionaire and this is a character we're going to be talking about tonight and his name the head of state no less for the space kingdom of Asgardia and I've played their national anthem on the show before and for any new listeners we're not making this up this is not me and nano girl trying to float a screenplay for some new future Netflix show nothing like that we are being 100% genuine here the space nation of our Asgardia's first head of nation and the guy who came up with us is Igor Asherbayi. Now, is that his name? Is that how you pronounce it? Asherbayi, ba- maybe? Asherbayi, yeah. Yeah, well, Bailey, I like it. Yeah. You see, it's, a, it's my Siberian dialect coming out. The Kremlin will not be happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> As long as they get some taxes from Igor, I'm sure they will be very happy. No, but this, this is this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, and it might sound right. like, and a lot of the coverage we agree that we've seen in the past almost makes it seem nonsensical in science fiction, right? Yes. But when you dig deeper below the surface, as you're going to show the listeners tonight, there's a lot more going on here. And this guy is uber clever. Oh, he's, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, he's 57 years old. Uh, he's Russian. Um, he's also descended from a uh, royal family, by the way. Um, he, he is a Russian computer scientist and engineer. He's got uh, 20 years of aerospace experience. Um, he's also the chairman of the board of a company that he started. He started out as a software company. And now I believe it's a company that owns that is it's like he's a venture capitalist. So all of these companies fall under this. He's a, he's a chairman of the board of it. And it's like 30 other companies and 10,000 people are working for him. And they all focus a lot on aerospace, uh, satellites, anything that you can think of that has to do with like, space exploration. So he's already has all this background experience when he decided to start as Guardia. So, and he created this in 2016. And um, this, and so his whole premise, and Kev, correct me if I'm wrong about this, is to create this nation that is free from war, free from, you know, you can be any religion, they're going to have a number of languages. It's worldwide. Um, they've launched their satellite, and it's a little shoebox size satellite, but it's got it out there. He was smart enough to try to become legitimized by the UN, right? And that's one of his things, recognized by the UN. He's still working on that. They have a bank, um, and they're figuring out how to kind of put this whole thing together. And the more you look at the pieces, the more you keep thinking that this sounds like a business. It's it's a a new way of thinking about business. Yeah. Uh, And right from their website, and this comes from Igor himself, King Igor, the head of state, Asgardia was created with three top goals in mind to ensure the peaceful use of space, to protect the earth from space hazards, and to create a demilitarized and free scientific base of knowledge in space. 
Asgardia also has a long-term objective of setting up habitable platforms in space and building settlements on the moon. Now, we believe that the creation of a new legal platform for the exploration of near Earth and deep space is crucial to keep pace with humanity's rapid technological and scientific expansion of planet. Universal space law and astropolitics have to replace the current outdated international space law and geopolitics. So that's right from the man himself, Nano Girl. Uh, and there's already people, lots of people around the world signing up for this. 200,000. Yep. And he just, uh, they just sort of, I don't know if we could say, he, they used the word inaugurated him. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, that that's the kind of um, video where I usually take the national anthem and play the, the Asgardian national anthem from. I know, folks, it sounds bizarre, but this is literally the birth of a new nation. And like Nano Girl was saying in opening up, that they're looking for the UN to recognize them as a nation. So they're just trying to tick all these boxes. And you think Igor himself, I mean, this is genius level because this is purely, as Russians always are, all about the business, right? Absolutely. Abs- to me, to, you know, like uh, when I was mentioning to Kev before the show that when I first started, and we need to acknowledge Melissa uh and those guys aaron for they they did the the video last year they did a great job of the video and that's actually where i first heard about them and i thought well okay i went huh huh okay huh i mean it was scary (laughs) but it wasn't until i i started researching on saturday and by yesterday i thought oh my god because i kept thinking that i kept asking myself this question and he keeps he keeps denying he's a billionaire but a num a number of people have said that they think he's a billionaire and i thought to myself billionaires don't start crazy uh corporations and waste all their money without them getting something in return and, you That's know, I, I think he might have a tendency to massage the facts, shall we say, Nano. He does claim to be what age? 56 years old? 57. 57. I tell you what, if I'm looking like this guy at the age of 57 and I'm a billionaire, I don't know, I'm doing something wrong, Nano girl. It must be that harsh Siberian weather again. This dude looks, and he, looks, he, looks, he looks very innocent, very sweet, very grandfatherly. Um, so somebody asked him the question, if, where, where, where has the media gotten the information wrong? And he said, I, he said, number one, I'm not a billionaire. I'm a normal person. I earned the money I've, I have starting from $20 in 1988. And that's where he started his business. I do not consider as Guardia as a business project. Well, he may not consider that, but it's looking awfully close like one. And one of my hopes for Asgardia is to see the birth of the first person in space. I hope that Asgardia will allow the infinite continuation of mankind from Earth. Because their plan after these satellites is to have arcs, right, within... It starts to sound like the TV show The 100, when you've got an arc and you've got like people living just in near earth or orbit and things what was that what was that movie with um the one where oh gosh uh uh matt damon was in it that space one where they that the rich people got to live in that little place yes yeah this sounds more like elysium and then the final frontier for him is supposedly getting us on the moon Within 25 years, they actually have a place to live on the moon. Don't talk to me about the moon, Nano Girl. Me okay. and the moon have fallen out. <laughs> I st- <laughs> yeah, you, you know, <laughs> that blood moon thing. I, I stayed up. Yeah, I was the crazy man that stayed up in Glasgow watching the stream on Uni Rock on YouTube, as you were as well. You know, lovely pictures from some uh, telescope somewhere around the world. And I was watching it myself and Anne, it was getting towards like, 4.30 in the morning, the full eclipse was there, you could still see the moon, and it was due to turn bright red at 5.12am. At about 5.06am, 
You know what happened over over Glasgow. Big, dirty clouds. So we stayed up all night for nothing, man, old girl. So don't speak to me about the moon. No, Igor can definitely keep the moon. But I was looking at their website today, back to Asgardia, who yeah. wants to build pods on the moon. Uh, I was interested to know that they had a map on there, and they're talking about view the mayor elections map. Now, I believe, looking at their Facebook page today, they've just had their first parliamentary kind of results in. I'll go and check that out when Nano takes over in a moment. But in Glasgow, right here, in my fine city of Glasgow, I was quite stunned to learn that there's 34 residents of Asgardia. 156 are suspended, which I don't really know what that means, Nano. But altogether, 342 Glaswegian users of the Asgardian website. Now, how many of them are actually amongst the first citizens? I'd say maybe 34, since it says 34 residents. But these are happening. These kind of people that are joining up and signing up for this CubeSat, all around the world, everywhere. He's going to have six permanent embassies worldwide, one on each continent. There's 12 cabinet of ministers, uh, I found the other thing that I found really interesting was the banking system. Um, well, that's because, as with any business, the yeah. money, what's happening with the money? And if they're starting their own bank as well, that's really significant. It is significant. And I kept thinking about uh, the Federal Reserve. Is he in league with these guys? Are they going to let him set up a bank? So. It says here, uh, and then also how uh, taxes and things like that. So does Asgardia have its own currency? Um, It's yes, and it's cryptocurrency. And it will be called SOLAR, capital S-O-L-A-R, as a unit of currency. The SOLAR is registered with the European Union Intellectual Property Office. Um, Solar is Asgardia's official monetary unit, a cryptocurrency that will be freely exchangeable to all main earthly currencies in the free market on Earth. The Bank of Asgardia will also be a lender of last resort. Um, Then the other thing, let's see. So this, you might find this interesting. So let's say you and I had a business and... Uh, What would that look like? The government encourages development of private businesses by establishing an appropriate tax and governmental insurance system. Private business is regulated by the law of Asgardia. There will be businesses within the jurisdiction of Asgardia. And once the businesses are running and utilizing infrastructure and benefits of Asgardia, they will be subject to taxes. So, Basically, they're saying they're trying not to tax the individuals. So I'm not sure. I can, and I kept reading, how do we get paid if we work for them? I'm not still quite sure about that. You know what I'm hearing here? This is almost like the modern kind of futuristic version of these millionaires and billionaires that like yeah. to hide their money down the Canary Islands. That's ex- Yes. Cayman Islands. Yes. Yep. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. So you create a new uh, sovereign nation <laughs> outside uh, the earth. <laughs> it's clever. You see, folks, we're laughing. It's smarter than clever. And, and they want us to think about the whole UFO and the kind of fantastical yeah. side of things because that's the perfect cover for an absolute racket that they can start here. I mean, let, let's let's just say that you and I were corrupt. What do they care, right? We we don't have to worry and fuss over the USA and Russian laws. We can just get the heck out of here. We'll sign up with Asgardia. It's a brand new country, right? Recognized forget by the up, <laughs> Nano. Forget signing up. I, I've got a master <laughs> plan. Right? Don't tell anyone. Right? We'll keep it secret. But okay. there's actually only one candidate running for the mayor of Asgardia, the Glasgow office. I think this character, whoever he, she, or it may be, needs some competition. How about, right, I try and infiltrate it? Veritas style. I get the hidden cameras on, I go to the meetings, and if nothing else, it could be a good laugh, right? (laughs) 
You'd have to become a citizen, so you want to be careful. That was another thing was a Coming citizen. Coming to life from your orbit, the mayor of Asgardia, Ken Baker, will be right back after these short messages. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so before we launch back into tonight's show, let me just remind everyone that the Kev Baker Show is brought to you in association with GetTheTea.com. Yes, that's GetTheTea.com. Now, Ronnie McMullen is the man behind the company that is changing America one tea bag at a time. And let's just head on over and hear what Ronnie has to say about GetTheTea.com. Times are changing. The circus of politics... Healthcare's low standards and high prices. And let's not forget food quality. What to do? Arm yourself with life change tea at getthetea.com. In a world of chemical imbalance and poor air and water quality, it's time you make a move. Log on to getthetea.com and stock up on organic non GMO supplements. Don't forget the tea. Cleansing your body never felt so good. And we have a brand new tea called Take Down Tea which helps support healthy glucose. All natural body support so you can be at your best naturally. All you have to do is log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. We're not a fad that comes and goes. We are the real deal. Join us and armor up. Getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Changing America's health one tea bag at a time. So remember, folks, head on over there. Check out Get The Tea at getthetea.com and remember to let Ronnie and the team know that you heard it here first on KBS. Let's get back into it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kev Baker and hopefully with the time delay with us broadcasting live from the CubeSat. I'm only joking, folks. I have got Nano Girl here with me tonight, and we are going deep, or we're rising high, to tell you all about the space nation Asgardia, also referred to as the first space kingdom of Asgardia. And I was describing it, or basically summarizing, in my words, what you'd been saying, Nano, about this being a business. And I think it's a good way, kind of one aspect to think about this. What a racket, really, because you used to see the movies, they would go on the boat, they would go down to the Canary Islands, Grand Canaria, well, sorry, um, yeah, the Canary Islands. And um, what they would do, and they would launder the money, stuff like that. Nowadays, of course, you know, if, if we're right here, basically you just set your PC, you would do an untraceable transaction via the blockchain, uh, and it would be totally laundered for you off world. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Came, um, so that's what I was looking for. Cayman Islands. I got there. Yeah. And, see? Well, uh, not to mention the fact that I <laughs> just, this guy has set himself up. He's, he's out there. He's been doing volunteer work. He's kind of an ambassador of sorts. That's not the title to the UN. He's done a lot of previous work with the UN. So he's he's planned this pretty doggone well. This has been going on for a long time. How much do you have to pay to become a citizen of Asgardia? Did you find out at all? You don't have to pay anything. Ooh. It's free. So um, you just sign up. But you need to read the fine print because one of the, the the kind of contradictory thing is it sounded like if you become a citizen of theirs, do you – my big question, and I think Aaron asked this question in his YouTube as well, is do you lose your citizenship? So let's pretend like it's me. Do I lose my citizenship from the USA? That wasn't clear. But then later in these question and answer sections, they said – do I have to obey? So let's be con- again. If I'm an Asgardian citizen, do I have to obey U.S. laws? And they are the, on the the uh, question and answer on their sites. Like, yeah, we really encourage you to obey the laws. It's like, well, which is it? <laughs> you know, well, there's no place for us Asgardians, quote unquote. If I was an Asgardian to live, so I guess I have to behave myself. Does that make me an expat? And I'm, you know, now I'm an expatriate of USA because I'm Asgardian. And do they if, have a passport office? Could I get a passport? Could I be a, like 
passport yes. that the yes, Cinderella's you, guard you. You can get a passport. You can and, get them from the and website. Gonna, and they'll actually let me get on a plane in airports with something like that? Well, they're working on having it be recognized as a legitimate passport. Holy shamoli. I know. It is a holy shamoli. Again, again, if it's to be recognized as a nation, then surely, yeah, why not? And one of their little – so I also read a bunch of articles that people wrote just about what their thoughts were on this. And one of them I saw was they may even be doing IQ tests for the people who sign up because there is a kind of a couple of eh, segue, not too big – printed kind of comments about where we're really looking for highly educated people who are probably more in the space industry right now. You know, the rest of you, we welcome, but, you know, so that's kind of said, you know, we're not looking, you know, we're not looking for people who are not, you know, employed maybe at McDonald's, nothing, not saying anything bad about anybody, but I think they want highly educated people. Which kind of begs the question if you're... They need to look kind of to the 2025 time frame or 25 years when they're going to have these pods on the moon. Somebody needs to fry burgers, Nano. Well, and going back, this kind of begs the question. If if I went to, to Yale and Harvard and Stanford and I was highly educated and I was an astrophysicist, per se, per se would I sign up for these people? Does a high IQ guarantee that you think this is all a good idea? And of course, you know, this CubeSat they've got, I mean, this is just the first kind of stage of a multi kind of satellite network leading up to the moon colony, right? Yes. So this is the first of it, right? And they have a half a terabyte of information sitting on the satellite, like I guess the size of a shoebox, which has their constitution and their flag and their song and da 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 da. And so that's flying around. If you go to the site, they have a satellite tracker to let you know where the satellite's going. So they're going to launch. Uh, they want to launch a couple of more satellites. Um, somebody asked them, "Are you creating? Are you developing your own satellite?" No, right now we're hiring people to do that. Um, and supposedly, again, Igor is paying for all this, question mark. I doubt it, but okay. And uh, so he'll be launching a couple more satellites in a couple more years. So that that's kind of what I got from that was they want to get a couple more satellites, and then they want to get these arcs up there. And I think that's going to be defrosting on the cake, right? You know, you know, the, where the rubber meets the road. It's when five they to seven the, years for these space arcs. Yeah. Yeah, it's when they start asking uh, potential citizens to provide a uh, one, two, or a twenty-three and me DNA test or something like that, Nano Girl. That, that that's when we have to start thinking even bigger picture. You know, is it going to be us that he's populating these moon pods with, or is it going to be copies of us that he's growing up there? Ooh, that's kind of creepy, isn't it? See, this is why, you know, this story, every time I've heard it, it sounds like the perfect plot for the start of a sci-fi film. And I can take it so many directions, but it's absolutely real. And the more you look into it, like Nano's been saying, the first thing she said to me tonight was, you know, the more you look at this, the more interesting and genius that you actually see in it. And it really is. And when you factor in the money, the blockchain side of it as well, you know, we talk about the carrot and the stick when I used to do shows with Anthony Patch. How do you entice people into a scheme, especially a blockchain, you know, artificial intelligence, all that side of it. And it is, you offer them a crypto coin on the end of it. And you can see that aspect of it here as well. It could be, do you think it in some way, Nano, it might be the world's first off-world Ponzi scheme or something like that? Actually, it's not the first off-world Ponzi scheme. Um, let me throw in something else to kind of fry your brain a little bit. Nice. When I was doing research, there's a company called the Lunar Embassy. Have you heard of them? Oh, no, this, I have not. This, this was started by Dennis Hope. So Dennis decided to start this company, oh, God, in 1980. And let me see. So he actually went to 
of course, he's from California and he went to the San Francisco, you know, people and presented this idea. And let me see here. Hold on just a second. Is this this dude that sells like plots on the moon? Yes. I've seen him one time on like a discovery show or something like that. Yes. Yep. I, I've heard of this. No, I've never looked into it, Nano. So give me the, the kind of details on this one. Okay. So let me see where he started. But anyway, he, let me get my notes here. Burr, 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 burr. Dennis Hope, selling literal hopium on the moon. He sells hopium on the moon. He sells uh, land on Mercury, Venus, Mars, Moon, Jupiter, and Pluto. So what he did was because of the UN treaty, and they never prevented people, the humans, and, you know, small businesses or businesses out of this treaty. He, he's not a country. So he could, so he said, contrary to popular belief, ownership by individuals of extraterrestrial properties is not forbidden. The 1967 UN Outer Space Treaty stipulates no government can own extraterrestrial property, but it neglected to mention individuals or corporations. Um, In 1984, they tried to plug the loophole, which they didn't do. Therefore, this is his premise. Therefore, one can become the legal owner of extraterrestrial body if you are the first one that claimed it and that the lunar and that is the lunar embassy. So you can you can you can buy a um, a passport from him. You can buy uh, prime prime view Martian properties from twenty four ninety nine to four ninety nine. And it's kind of he sells it by the acre, by the way. If you would like to buy Pluto, Pluto, it's $250,000, just in case you would like to buy Pluto. You can get an extraterrestrial passport and nationality, $21.99. At least you think this guy is not making money. He is making a buku bunch of money. He's been in business, like I said, since 1980, and he filed a patent and nobody questioned it. And Russia and, and the U.S. did not go after him when he filed the patent for this whole thing and say, no, you can't do this. Now, he does make it a, a stipulation that um, he's not going to sell you land where, like, for, for instance, where China landed last what was a couple weeks ago. He's not going to sell you that piece of land. He's not going to sell you where the Apollo landed or, you know, because after all, that really is something special and belongs to those countries. See, um, he's got his con- <laughs> conservation hat on. This is good. <laughs> this is even better. Wait, it gets, it wait, it gets so better. Yeah, so much so, better. Okay. So if you and I, let's say we bought a couple of plots over here on the moon, um, China can land on our plots, but supposedly – if they mine our plots, they owe us money. Oh, bingo. Bingo. That's what we need, Nano Girl. And you know, yep. I was moaning about the blood moon, not being able to see it. Imagine us two chilling out up there in yep. a, a lunar crater, just kicking back, you know, way down, obviously, because of the gravity issue. Yeah, whatever. And we could have been watching the most spectacular show because we think the blood moon's nice. Imagine looking from the moon back at Earth and just seeing that orange glow around the planet with the sun on the other side as we bask in the umbra, the shadow of the actual planet. That would be something to see. Especially if it was your own plot of land yeah, that you I, bought from the Lunar Embassy. And you're watching the Chinese rover edging ever <laughs> closer with a drill bit. You're thinking, come on, just keep coming. But ready to pay you. For the use of your moon, moon, moonland, and the Asgardian flag and the anthem going in the background, obviously. <laughs> no, no, these are two different entities. Oh, <laughs> come on now! Oh, get, I want my Asgardian. Straight. No, definitely. I really long. I yearn for the day when we're watching the Olympics and the first Asgardian, like I don't know, <laughs> high jumper or something, wins, and he stands there with a tear in his eye as the flag goes up and the satellite goes overhead. Oh, come on. That'd be brilliant, right? It would be absolutely brilliant. <laughs> but I'm going to be sitting on my plot of land uh, that Dennis, or or I can be on Pluto. 
Two because I, for $250,000, I can buy Pluto. Yeah, do you want me to send you the little picture? I mean, you can't buy a, a, like a condo in Malibu for that price, right? Uh, you can't buy anything in, in California for that. <laughs> but you can buy Pluto, right? Yep, and there it is. I just sent it to you. You might want to show our, our uh, listeners that. Yep. Not cute, and he, and you do it. You add it to a cart, so this is all online. So I could just add. That was the part that cracked me up the most. It was like, yes, I will add the purchase of Pluto. I will add it to my cart. Yeah, she got food <laughs> or something with that. Is it like two tanks of opium comes with it? <laughs> I could not believe this. I spent hours on this. I was like, no way. Wow. I honestly, I mean, I'd heard about the moon. I never appreciated for one moment that somebody's actually oh, trying yeah. to sell Pluto. And nobody's he, anything about it. No, and he has sold, like, millions of acres. It's, it's or it's a ton of acres. Well, I can't remember. Musk, what if Musk lands on somebody's back garden? As Musk check. You can land there, you ju- but if you mine there, then you have to pay rent as it were you have to pay me or you money might become like the israelis up in space he might be like throwing people out their homes and just settling there when he's like building his colony hope he doesn't turn out a bad guy like that elon he's laying a bunch of people off over here you know from the tesla company right you heard that right not heard much about elon lately i don't follow elon musk at all hardly watch the guy tell me nano what's he been up to so, um, to make everybody mad here, he's laid off 7% of his workforce at Tesla. Because, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what his big money problem is. I guess he's not making enough cars, or he's going to just move it over to China. I think he's always wanted to have China make the cars. That's my assessment of it. And I, I can't begin to tell you guys how many Teslas there are out here. There's a mega ton of Teslas. Teslas. It just, I, I see them everywhere. I've only seen one over here, and that's not to say there isn't a lot of them. I've never really checked. Yeah. But I must admit, if I had the money, it was a lovely looking car. It really was. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It, yeah, it's beautiful. I I personally would not buy one, but it, it is gorgeous. Yeah. I don't like buying status symbols. No. To me, it's kind not, of status symbol y. No. But I, I can't. Uh, I don't think either of us have ever been affluent enough to be to be buying the top of the range kind of. Uh, and, and then there's that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then there's that, Kev. Just throw me an old one, Elon, please. An old test model will do. No, but anything else about Asgardia? Because I know you've got so much we could get into on this one space nation alone. Um. Well, I thought the taxes on citizens, I I thought this comment was interesting. Um, And supposedly they're going to have a vote. So we have technology and capabilities today that do not require such archaic and outdated systems. In this poll, so they're doing a poll, I will propose two systems that are are far better than the aforementioned. So... uh, Anyway, one the number one was abolish the national bank and enact the use of national digital cryptocurrency. This currency would be based on the assets of the nation, including the labor capital resources assets and future revenue. Okay, that's option one, which I thought, that just sounds like a labor camp to me, but okay. Uh, number two, prohibit the implementation of citizen taxation and replace the outdated system with means to generate revenue as a nation, the nation itself should provide services to other nations and businesses that will generate revenue rather than taxing individuals. Personally, the way I see this, Kev, the way that everything is structured after everything I've read, and I could probably dive way deeper in all this, is if you have a company and you want to do offshore, (laughs) as it were, offshore business, you probably be headed in the right place. I don't think you'd have to become a member of it, of Asgardia to do it. I'm sure Igor would be glad to take your money and tax you accordingly. But as a 
regular human being, citizen person, I don't see where there's any jobs or you could be doing anything right now. There's there's nothing. You can volunteer, but they don't pay you, which they said very clearly on their site. So I don't see where the, the regular individual human being person – and there's been some grumbling that Igor has all the power because he can disband the parliament anytime he feels like it. I mean – after all, he said that the, you know, running things the way the royals have all these years is actually a very good idea. <laughs> it's worked for them. Mm, it doesn't sound like the most beneficial kind of a uh, king I've ever heard of. I'm looking at the website again here, Nano Girl, and yeah. I know I've been guilty tonight of again having a bit of a laugh with the story, but it is truly serious and there's a serious aspect to it. And yeah. they really are meaning business because. I remember when it was Aaron and Melissa Dykes, True Stream Media, the video you mentioned earlier on, I'd seen that they had employed somebody that was familiar to me. And he was familiar because of British politics. And this character is called Lembit Opic. I know it's, it's a strange kind of name. But he actually came to my attention, not because he was some shining light in the British political system or anything like that, more to do with the fact that he married one half of a set of twins that shot to fame on the back of one of these silly reality shows or or singing shows over here. So it was a bit of a kind of celebrity and really, really strange relationship. The wife was a really, really, can I say, pretty and attractive without being dragged off to jail and beaten over the head with a club for being old school. I don't know anymore. But he, he doesn't look the most... Uh, Pleasing on the eye, shall we say, Nano Girl. And it was just a strange kind of partnership altogether. But he is their chairman of parliament. Now, he's featured in the inauguration video that has the national, the, the kind of national anthem, things like that. So he's the actual chairman of parliament. You've got a prime minister who has videos on Facebook talking about Happy New Year Day. Uh, and her name is Anna Diaz. You've got the Supreme Justice, because like the UK, it's the government split into these three branches. You've got the Parliament, and then you've got, I can't remember, I've got not got it in front of me, but you've got the judiciary, the, the courts as well. So the head of the courts is somebody called Yoon Zhou, and then head of admin, Mikhail Spockion, Spock, 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 we'll just call him Spock Nano Girl, right? So yeah. you've got this whole parliamentary system, and you can say, well, it may be just on the face of it. But this character, Lembit Opic, I don't know too much about the other ones, but he does come with a good knowledge of legalese, how these kind of political worlds work. And if you're trying to get recognised by the UN, I would say somebody like that's probably rather priceless, even if he was a bit of a joke figure in British politics. And then they've, they've just published not long ago, on their Facebook page, a link to their website that talks about the Counting Commission released parliamentary voting results. And these uh, parliamentary session, which took place on the 10th to 12th of January, candidates for the following acting ministers have been approved. And they go through a list of people. They've got the Minister of Safety, Minister of Science, Minister of Citizenship, Minister of Safety and Security and Minister of Trade and Commerce as well. It says Parliament also approved the possibility of holding special voting to appoint ministers of Asgardia. The amendments and additions to the acts of acts, <laughs> whatever that is, including the formation of the Secretariat to support the Parliament's operations and expanding the rules and procedures of Parliament. So you can see here, and it's talking about also just a, as an afterthought, also voted in favour of confer confirming the flag, the anthem and the coat of arms. So as much as I do laugh about it, I don't want people to go away from this tonight thinking it's all one big joke. It, you know how I roll. This, this is just the way I am. But this is, I wouldn't say deadly serious, financially serious nano. And they are. They're definitely something to be watched. I think it's very serious, and I think that um, – so what did I get out of researching this for 
the two days, right? I, it kind of reopened the door. And let me step back because you and I had talked before the show. I think that that the space and all of this stuff kind of got reintroduced with the UFO and all of the green, the blue chicken and all that crap. But I think the real issue without all of the, the craziness in front of us is business in corporations. And, and this is now they're getting serious, you know, and again, I think with Trump announcing the space force, which I want to talk a little bit about tonight and also um, China landing on moon. At this point, things are, are moving towards very serious and very serious business because we need the elements that are on the moon and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, this is the beginning of taking a look at maybe even how you would start your own nation or your own business outside of all the laws of, of your of your planet, of your country. Another thing that I didn't realize is people are going to school and studying space law. That's going to be something very new. Lots of laws and lawyers. And we've got to go past what the UN has not passed. And the UN, of course, is busy catching up and doing more treaties and more this and more that. So I think we're going to see a lot of activity. And, you know, how are we and are and I guess the bigger question is, are we going to take our thinkology and our politics into space? Are we going to bring the same, you know, border battles and, you know, all of that war stuff and all of that stuff? How are we going to divvy up the moon? It's going to happen. And uh, I, I don't think negative nano, but I fear that we would follow in the same kind of path as we've done down here on Earth. And I hate to sound negative and pessimistic, but I I just honestly do think we would make the same mistakes. Well, we haven't changed down here, so what would be different up there? And I think, you know, looking into what Trump wants to do um, and militarize everything, which, I, you know, we could certainly talk about after the break, because I did some research on that. Is like, you know, where are we headed? And my guess is all the countries will do it, right? China will do it. Russia will do it. Nobody's not going to bring their military. But again, it's not about UFOs. It's about business. And, of course, you know, they might all say that they're working together, but Star Wars was something we heard about years ago with Ronald Reagan. And you could look at the Space Force as almost being like the start of a new kind of arms race. And when you hear arms race, it's like nano says. It's big business. Big, big business. We'll back on the other side, folks. What's come from this show? Or stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is the Camp Baker Show. Hour number two with Nano Girl, all the way from Silicon Valley, and we are going to outer space because tonight we started off with the United Nations, and we've done that purposely because the United Nations are, well, I wouldn't say they're set to, but it certainly looks like there's an attempt by the first space nation of Asgardia to get the UN to recognize them as a sovereign nation. Now we get into the business aspects of that. Me, as per usual, I can't be trusted. Uh, I had some fun with it. And in the list of kind of subjects that you're down for tonight, Nano, I think it's perfect progression in the show now to talk about something else I like to think about a lot. I like to let my imagination go as well at times. But Donald Trump, love him or hate him, he's the guy that set up Space Force. Oh, there, there it is. There's the phone call from NASA. Tell Kev to lay off Space Force. Uh, let me see if I... If I can turn it off. Sorry. That's okay, Nano. I, like I say, this is what happens when NASA call into the show. I'm trying to tell you. Maybe it's D-Wave. I think it's done. I think okay. It's, maybe it's Geordie Rose. I've, I was. No, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> Tell that Kev Baker lay off me. No, not I'm not going after Jordy Rose tonight. But Donald Trump, Space yeah. Force. What, what do we make of this, Nano Girl? We were talking about a new, or I was talking about a new arms race, a, a space arms race before the break. That could certainly fill the coffers of the military industrial complex. Well, you know, when he first announced it, I, it, you know, having been brought up in the military, I get it. You know, we always want to be, uh, make sure that we have all our bases covered, blah, blah, blah. Uh, although I'm not sure I buy. If you can control the high ground, then you have the, the dominance. And the ultimate high ground would be right. Earth's orbit, right? Well, uh, but I, uh, I guess I still had a question like why? You know, I mean, it in some ways it didn't make sense because I figured the Air Force was covering the bases anyway. But the more that I, again, did research on Asgardia, it made sense that uh, the and let's face it, Donald's biggest support right now is the military. Um, I think that's who got him into office, and it looks to me like that's kind of one of his backers, if if you will, for being in the White House. And um, they actually gave him a standing ovation when he went to go visit them last yeah. week. You know, I was watching him. Was it Christmas time? He, he yeah. went to see the troops as well out in Iraq. Yeah. And then um, from the, I mean, I know the media were saying that the soldiers and everything that they, they don't take to him and stuff, but it looked like they absolutely adore him, really like him. So I, I do think the military, I do think they have his back or, again, love him or hate him. I think they probably would have um, outed him from the White House by now. I think so too. I think that they do like him. I think that's that's another lie. I think he is well liked by them. Um, he treats them with kindness and respect. I think he, I, you know, I think that the military likes their because on, at the end of the day, the people that are their bosses are the people in the White House. That's who their bosses are. So ultimately, he is their boss. Um, no officer is still allowed to say anything bad about the president verbally or in or, or or you know in the press or anything like that it's not allowed so they have to they have to you know they have to kind of tell the line when it comes to him but i think that they seem to like him better than the last couple of ones although they seem to like shrub a little bit too but um but anyway so basically i was I, really no, I curious just to Go ahead. To that, nano just to add to that i mean i've done time yep. in the military as well mm-hmm. and from my experience, you know, you're not looking at, at the policies and things like that coming out from you, the White House on your side, Parliament down here. You're just in there to do a job. And if they're telling you to go X, Y or Z, you go X, Y or Z. And really, it's not your to place to question why and certainly not criticise anyway. And in the end of the day, different over here because it's Her Majesty's Armed Forces. So really, oh. yes. Oh, yes. I see. <laughs> but I mean, when I was, um, I know exactly, and I know it makes me sick. You know, they had me swearing an oath of allegiance to a picture of her when I signed up for the army. People out there will be rolling and laughing. Yep, me stood there like a, a you know, a kind of wet-eared wee boy signing up, giving my oath to the reptilian that I would spend years in the future coming after on shows like this. You couldn't make this stuff up. But when I was in the army... Tony Blair, war criminal extraordinaire. He actually won the general election and took power in there when I was in. So I know what it was like to kind of uh, to work for one of these criminals. And it wasn't something you kind of just um, you just got on with it. Yeah, I don't. I think that's a part of an aspect of the military that's not very very uh, fun. Um, I. I Growing up, I, as, as I got older, I saw how political it was. And, you know, when I first was very young, I thought, okay, well, they're protecting us. But then, you know, my father was an officer, a pretty high rank, and you got, I got to see and hear all of the politics and everything that goes into it. So when I see shows where it's all Washington, D.C., and these cocktail parties and all that stuff, it's all politics. It's all who you know um, and the agendas. So it can be very difficult to navigate. And then if you're 
somebody who's in the military and you're not an officer necessarily or you're enlisted or whatever, you're at the effect of all this kind of crazy insanity, really, or whoever's yeah. in the White House. Exactly. And when you're in the ranks, like you're saying, not in that officer class, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you've got not only the, the kind of inner workings of the, the politicians to worry about, but there is a different world, that kind of officer world as well. And there's agendas been played out there and they've got things that you don't know nothing about as a lower rank. So you really are, they talk about crap rolling downhill. That's the military for you. No wonder they call them, well, the makers wear dog tags. <laughs> dog Kissinger, wasn't it? I think it was Kissinger or Brzezinski called us dogs. That's, yeah, exactly. That's how they look at their armed forces, you know. I, and, I, and I think, you know... Trump doesn't act like that. No, he, no, he definitely doesn't. Not from what I've seen. Not at all. And he, and he doesn't act like that when he goes on the road. And that's why he packs them in. He still packs them in. If yeah. he gets, if if people know he's coming, they're there. You know, I I realize that. I mean, take from the the whole Clinton and him the race, apart from the actual televised debates, but. The images of when he was turning up to, say, a stadium and Hillary was having to pay rent a crowd and still didn't look like anything when you seen the true camera shots. I mean, for me, on the outside, that showed me that he had a, a big following. He does have a big following, despite what the media try and tell people. The media is lying. I mean, I don't I don't I, we all know that we all know that I'm not saying anything anybody doesn't know. In fact, here was something interesting. Yesterday, I saw an article uh, from the Washington Post, and it was a YouTube, well, it was a YouTube, and it was about the TSA guys. You know, there was a couple of people from the TSA um, complaining that they hadn't gotten a paycheck, right? They're not getting paid. They're part of the 800,000 people not being paid. You should have seen the comments. 20,000 hits. How ma- What percentage do you think was supporting the TSA people whining on their YouTube. Could take a guess. Not many. Yeah, exactly. Ninety nine percent, I would say, of the comments on that on that YouTube were too bad for you, TSA. And I go back again to Aaron and Melissa's latest uh, YouTube, where she had to go through TSA and what they did to her. And yeah. I still can see her face. I, and it's because, you know, we know she's somebody we know. Well, well, you know, we we're familiar with who she is. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's it brings it home. And those guys are so good at what they do. And so I could only see her face while I'm listening to these guys whine and nobody cares. I mean, the comments like my favorite comment was. Well, how, now you know how it feels. Now you know why we just think you're a bunch of molesting marauders. You get what you got. You know, you got what you what, what's coming to you. I thought, whoa. And so my point is this. Those guys get pretty good praise, even though so many of us in this country don't like them. And then you got to see for yourself, not only are there a ton of us, just about all of us don't like them. That's a pretty high percentage, nine, about 99%, especially for the Washington Post to keep it there. Tensions are high in your country, aren't they? Tensions? Yeah. Oh, Just, tensions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember after the election, you were one of millions that really, even family, you were struggling. There was like relationship breakdowns and things like that because yeah. of the election. It feels to me on the outside, and again, a lot of this coming from the mainstream, so I don't know. But it seems like it hasn't really died away too much. No, no. In fact, if anything, I think it's worse um, on some level. Um, And, you know, thinking of like speaking of trends, I look at the Gillette ad and then I look at Kevin Spacey, Let Me Be Frank. And I, I the reason I bring those two up is because they're so over the top of dystopian thinking like in the past and i said this previously on your show somebody like it had been accused what kevin spacey had been accused of 
there would be some kind of decorum and we're not seeing that at all. In fact, it's completely the opposite. I don't know if you saw him show up at court. There's another series of YouTubes where he shows up in court. If you have a minute of time, check out the outfit this guy wears to court and the look on his face. I mean, I'm not saying that just because all the stories that are out there overnight hasn't become a good actor or anything, but I used to really like Kevin Spacey, you know, so I, I try and follow the story as closely as I can and, I've not yeah. seen any of the court stuff, so I'll definitely need to check that out. But the Gillette advert, I've been <laughs> quite outspoken about that one. I really have. And, you know, right. Gillette, they just really need to stick to what they're best at. Don't get involved in this whole virtue signaling They thing. need to go just, out of business. Just sell razors. Yeah, no, sell no, no, they, they, no they, they need to be out of business. I but, think what they did, the damage that they're doing to the guys – and, and maybe it's because it's kind of in America. It's, you know, it's done in our market over here. I am so mad that I think they should just go out of business. In fact, Monograph called them Gillette, J-I-L-L-E-T-T-E. And um, this is part of the Me Too. This is part of the backlash. This is, you know, it's all part of this social engineering is what it is. And if if they had slammed other people as badly as they slammed the people in that that video, that never would have come out. If yeah, people of color, people, people from or, other countries, exactly. no way. Or you know the, the other kind of trending topic right now, transgender. If they'd gone oh, after that group, oh my god, they'd see, be out of business. Exactly. Uh, you know, I brought up the whole thing. Uni Rock talks about the whole. Go broke, uh, go woke, get broke. I was talking about that the other night on the show, yeah. and I really do think, you know, like you were saying, I, I think this is going to make Gillette suffer to the point where they really will be struggling. And you could call them, this is them, you know, this is what they get for trying to pander to the the woke brigade, or as I like to call them now, the woke and dead. Yes, I like that. You think so- of these scenes of people screaming in the street. Over absolutely nothing. These social justice warriors that are just absolutely ludicrous, outrageous in their actions, screaming their heads off. And tell me that you can't equate that to one of these mass hordes that you see in The Walking Dead of the zombies and stuff like that. It's on a par with that. I'm telling you, there's something far wrong. These people have been, it's not a virus per se, but it's definitely a program that's in their mind, right? Well, I, th- I again, I think it's social engineering on steroids. Gone wrong. <laughs> and it's 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 bigger than life. And and so I'm going to make a com- I got to finish my comment about Kevin Spacey because yes, he is an absolutely excellent actor. And no, I'm not condoning his behavior, but I'm fascinated as heck. So check out when you watch it. Think about. Let me be frank. The kitchen scene, the clothes, the you know the costume he wore. That cup was not a holiday cup. It was a cup. It was from the Queen. It was her <laughs> jubilee <laughs> celebration. Queen of Lizard Gray. Yes, exactly. Okay, so go over to when you check out his outfit to court. He has a dorky shirt on. He has a three-piece suit that doesn't fit him that great. He has this very innocent, wide-eyed Kevin Spacey. Uh, that only Kevin Spacey could do, kind of like, wow, I, I don't know what I'm doing here, but you know, I, I know I have to be here. These guys are so usual suspects. Good exactly, <laughs> exactly. He's re- resurrecting all his famous roles, and he's doing an awesome job of it. So, again, I, I like I said, there's these trends that I see, and Gillette just walked right into one of them. And I think personally, those of us who are awake should continue to use the word social engineering. It's, 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 it's up a level of, of this is absolutely being done intentionally and it's doing a lot of damage. And if people can start to use the thinking and understand where, what they're trying to do, hopefully that will keep us from falling into the trap of getting – yeah, I know I'm mad, but getting all caught up in it 
and just saying, look at the social engineering going on over there, and yeah. I don't want to be a part of it. Uh, yeah, I came up through the schools in, what, 80s and graduated, 90s. Well, say graduate. Yeah. I really need to move to America. I've picked up all American lingo. I left school. <laughs> That's what we call it over here. We just leave school, right? But um, in the early 90s. And, you know, we were dealing with, you know, equality and people that had different sexual persuasions and stuff. All of that was getting dealt with back then. And, you know, I'm not saying the world was perfect before this wave of, like, the woke brigade started kind of picking picking up pace. But, you know, I think people in general, Nano, we had pretty much sorted all that kind of old school kind of mindset that you used to see going on, stuff like that. Women were certainly more out in the workplace and from what you would see in the, the kind of the past as well. And you, this is why you're right. I'm just trying to kind of add to your point here. You're right. This has been used as a tool. This has been used as a weapon because I'm not saying everything was perfect, Nano, but there wasn't a problem that justified this kind of uh, draconian response. Which is why I think they had to take it up a level. Yeah. Maybe even five. And because it worked very well for them twice. So we've been through this in the 60s and we've been through this after um, uh, Justice, what was this? What was the one from um, Anita Hill? Okay, so we went through this twice. I have no intention of going through this again. And it breaks my heart that we've been used to to uh, go at each other in this social engineered kind of reality is See, what we're living in. It's the ultimate divide and conquer, isn't it? Ultimate yes. Turn people on each other. You make as many different groups as you can uh, and you separate people into all of these different groups, these different herds, and yeah. just let them go at each other. And, you know, I'm, I'm watching uh, our Vampirus, uh, you know, Speaker of the House, who, on one hand, doesn't doesn't blink an eye threatening the president and on the other hand plays the girl card the you know she, when she did the little press conference and she played the girl card he threatened me i was scared and i thought no chick you don't get to play it both ways you're either out there being the vampire that you are and and you're the wicked witch of the east or the west or whichever but you don't get to play the little girl card that trump scared you because it's the same thing that hillary tried to pull no be one or the other. And most of us aren't going to buy the little girl act either. And I think that's what really bugs me as a woman. It's like, if you're kind of a witch, just be a good witch. I mean, be excellent at being a witch. But don't play the little girl card. You see, I heard a rumor from my source. I've got sources, can't name them, right? So I heard from a little birdie that Nancy Pelosi... She's actually one one thousandth and twenty fourth as guardian. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Does that mean we get to ship her in the ark? Oh well, God! It's only five years left. We have to. Put I up think her. Donald Trump should phone up Musk. Say, Musk, <sighs> I want to jettison her out here on the next dragon you're sending up, and we're, and we're good. We're good to go. <laughs> I'll bail Tesla out if you get rid of her. Just now, put her in the car and shoot her into space. Well, that would have been good, wouldn't it? If we'd like put oh. her in the space suit and put her in the roadster. Everyone would have believed it was flying around Mars then, right? And you could just put the <laughs> coffin in the front seat and just let her be there. Forget Is get that what they do with vampires? <laughs> Forget get mobile, just launch them on all in a giant <laughs> coffin out into the cosmos. <laughs> How do I know? Because you said it, ba boom. Oh. <laughs> We're so bad. Look you've what you made me do. You've got nano girl. You see, it's not a good show until I get you laughing somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a more serious note, if we can, my bad. I apologize. But Alex Jones, okay. you know, I like to dip my toe into Infowars every day. Actually, yes. Yep, still listen to it. Usually doing the dinner for Ran getting in. See. See, I'm a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> See, I'm living this whole new life. But I'm listening to Alex Jones, and he's talking to Roger Stone. And I, I don't know what to make of this, because I don't really follow it deeply enough. Don't know if you do, but I'll get your thoughts on it. Jerome Corsi, 
he's turned on Alex Jones and Roger Stone. He's going to give evidence against all of them and Trump, say he was paid off by, by Jonesy, hush money, stuff like that. It's going to lead to not only Donald Trump being arrested, but also also Mike Pence as well. And that's significant, according to Jones and Stone, because that would mean that the aforementioned wicked witch of D.C., yes, I said that, Nancy Pelosi, and the even wickeder witch of Arkansas, or whatever she hails from originally, Hillary Clinton, they would be ushered into the White House. Pelosi would then step down and give power to Hillary. Is there anything in that nano, or is it, you know, is it just kind of out there? I think Nano Girl just died <laughs> from what you just said. That, that's, um, what, that's what they've been talking about. Um, okay, was, wait, let's go back to Corsi. Um, I have heard so many stories about Jerome Corsi. Now, I didn't hear that they that he's to the point where he's saying that they paid. What you said they paid him off. The, yeah, the Washington Post, I think it was, published a okay. story saying that Corsi was ready to give evidence to say that when he left Infowars, he was given a severance package, which happens when you, you leave a company. Not right. knocking that, but they're trying to say it was hush money for him to stay quiet about the information he has about Stone and WikiLeaks and Jonesy and Russia. And because it's that Russian connection, then they can basically go after Pence as well. Because if not, Pence would take power, right? Not, I don't think that'd be a bad thing for the globalists, according to them. But that's why I'm asking you. I don't know if there's any truth in it, if it's all hyped up. You know me these days, I try and uh, get as many angles as possible. I don't like to really commit on anything, Nano. So much disinformation and hype going about. There, especially with Corsi, because I thought there was, I thought at first he was going to sing, and then he wasn't going to sing. And then they, they were trying to get him to say something, and he said, no, I won't say that. And so he, for me keeping up with him has been kind of confusing. Like I've tried to keep up with what's going on with him and it's very confusing. I don't, so I don't know about that. I have been trying to pay a little bit of, again, and what's going on in DC where they're continuing to go after Donald Trump and try to impeach him. Um, now, did you see the body language at the funeral with Pence and Hillary? No, I, th I think if, well, he went over, and shook, or she did. If you remember during the funeral, she refused to even barely acknowledge. In fact, I don't think she acknowledged when Trump walked in with Melania. So forget it. But Vice President Pence came over and shook her hand, and she stood up. Hillary stood up and shook his hand, and she, she was super chummy with Pence. So just based on what I saw, I don't think they'd get rid of Pence because he's probably one of theirs. Well, I, I think that's kind of where Roger Stone, I think he kind of falls on that side of the fence as well. Yeah. So they wouldn't be too displeased if it was Pence, but, you know, the dream ticket would be Pelosi and Hillary. They could fly around the Oval Office together. <laughs> I've heard that too. I uh, I don't know. It's all like this. And then you have Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. She's running. She's announced her candidacy. Is you heard my that favorite right. running yet? Is who? Is my favorite running yet? Ocasio Cortez. Oh, God. She's popular. <laughs> she's popular. I know she's absolutely. She triggers people to the max. When I say that, people just go alive. And unfortunately, we're moving into the final part of tonight's show but stay tuned because right after myself and nano girl wrap up for today lucky and dr brooks agnew they will be along right here on tfrlive.com and tomorrow night i'll be joined by another good friend charlie robinson he'll be coming back onto the show author of the octopus of global control i'll be getting his thoughts on all the current events going on and charlie will be putting them in some kind of historical frame because his book, The Octopus of Global Control, it's got over 500 quotes from 300 of the top movers and takers in the elite system that have been working towards this whole New World Order agenda, for lack of a better term, for over 100 years. So I like that he can give it some kind of historic perspective, show us the things happening today have been spoken about for a very long time. 
And then the following night on the 23rd, Wednesday, we're going to have a returning guest. Really looking forward to this one. Matt Landman is going to be coming back onto the show. We're going to be getting his take on all the latest geoengineering programs, climate change, and I don't mean the man-made stuff. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, the man-made uh, carbon stuff. I'm talking more about the artificial man-made weather stuff with Matt Landman on Wednesday night. And to round off the week, we'll have Don Wiskin on in our one on Thursday. We'll be opening up the phones as we usually do when Don is on. And with it being Thursday, usually I'm joined by Jimmy Jeans in the second hour. We'll try and drag Joe Joseph in as well, Scotty Lopez, and we'll do a little bit of a pre-freaky Friday on Thursday this week right here on KBS. And just one more shout out before I hand it back to Nano Girl, because I'm excited about this one. You know how I love to get new kind of new blood for the show. And I'm not talking about Ambrosia, that, that kind of young blood company that's uh, selling things over in Florida. More of that if we've got time by the end of the show. But new guests coming on a week tonight. And it's astrophysicist Brendan Drackler. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But we're going to be getting into black holes, fast radio bursts, UFOs, all the good stuff that I love to talk about. And I know a lot of you out there love to get into as well. So that's Monday next week. So Nano Girl, synchronistically enough, here we are talking about space tonight. Somehow we got from the Space Force to Nancy Pelosi on a broomstick and here, there and everywhere. But I'd love for you just to take as much time as you want to sum up what we started on from Asgardia to the Space Force. Um, well, I think by just... Oh, we've opened up the door to something that I hadn't really contemplated, and I, I think it's probably been there and it's been growing for a long time, but I think we're going to see a whole lot more of it, and it's business, and it's how we're going to be moving forward as a planet, as nations in space, that obviously we're going to be doing moon landings but more and more we're going to be doing things like launching satellites and um getting mining and you know it's going to be more about business out there versus just uh the fun of landing something on the moon or landing something in mars or even colonizing i think first we're going to see a lot of mining and um, I'll, uh, so that's kind of, I, as I said, I, I didn't really think of it quite that way. I didn't think of creating an, a new nation out there like Asgardia, like a very, again, a very different way to do business. Um, yeah, well, well, not really, we're... though, when you think about what, what we would said, but yeah. Some of the sci-fi shows we watch, I think more typically, you right. find corporations in space, isn't it? Well, like Expanse. Yeah. Right. Out belt out in the asteroid belt. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Exactly. Back show if anyone hasn't checked that out. Absolutely brilliant. It's all about business and um, something like the Stargate, which I know is a sci-fi show, but again, <clears throat> basically they started going to visit all the planets to see what weapons they could bring back, and that was kind of a big part of their agenda of space exploration is what kind of what kind of exotic weapons can you find that were that, developed by the aliens as above so below because you you look at the way technology comes into the consumer market nano right and technology from this world you know it's always coming from the military first you've got darpa they'll fund all the the startups and then you'll find that the military will try and find one use or another for it utilize it weaponize it and then once they've moved on to the next thing or it's kind of outdated that's when it starts to they find the commercial use for it very much like the stargate tv show like you're saying there you know they go out there and first and foremost on their mind if there's anything here we can use as a weapon we'll take that and if there's anything you know of archaeological interest after that or anything else going on yeah we'll see if we've got room for it exactly yeah. And let me throw one thing down for those of us who are so fond of NASA. <clears throat> Part of uh, 
this change, and it's going to take a couple of years for them to get this organized and set up. It has to be voted in by Congress. But the question, one of the questions in the article was NASA. Aside from absorbing a lot of space activities of the Air Force, it would also absorb the space activities of NASA. So I think we might see either the end of NASA, certainly the end of NASA as we understand it, and they'll just probably suck in that $17 billion that we send to them, maybe reduce their PR uh, budget to less. Do you think I should, you know, I'm getting a lot of these, well, not a lot, but a couple of these people from the world of science on, right? Astrophysicists, they must know people that work for or have worked on projects for NASA. Should I bring somebody from NASA onto the show? Could the Kev Baker show bring somebody from NASA onto the show and survive? Sure. Yeah, I think so. I think I should try and make this happen. You won't get a straight answer, but go ahead, invite him. Hey, hey. <laughs> won't be the first time that's happened on my show, Nano Girl. Don't worry about that. I'm used to that minefield. Whoa. And that would be kind of cool, though, wouldn't it? That, that it would. Would, would be super it would. cool. Ah, I can dream. You know, then we get to NASA. Maybe I could get Musk on. Okay, okay, now I'm getting carried away. But that's looking to the future. And that's what we're going to do next, because somebody you introduced me to, somebody you introduced a lot of the TFR audience to as well, because I heard you speaking with Lucky and Brooks Agnew one night about the, the trends analyst. I usually go to Gerald Salente, but you go yeah. to Faith Popcorn, right? Oh, I love Faith Popcorn. Um, She didn't have a lot of... Uh stuff out for 2019 yet but but you know all of the stuff that she's talking about from leaving last year is absolutely point on but one of the things i wanted to throw out there and i sent you a little picture i i saw this um another good uh magazine i'm gonna have to start reading more often is ad week and ad week has all kinds of things like updates on commercials commercials being played on the uh the um the world's uh what am i want to say uh the football thing what would you call it the not world series the other one the um world super Cup. bowl super mm-hmm. bowl um anyway but long story short i saw something from craft okay so if we if we go all the way from gillette to craft everybody knows who craft foods is and i sent you a little picture and so what craft did very clever i think it was last week uh, Kraft takes out a post and seek, post ad seeking more support of furloughed workers as shutdown continues. So what they did was on January 16th, Kraft Heinz Company, uh, they ran a letter, an open letter from Kraft and set up a place where 800,000 federal government workers could go in and get a bag of food. Uh, It says, we hope by the time you read this, the shutdown is over. In the event it's not, we wanted to ask ask for your help. We've made a commitment to support families through this situation to the very end, no matter how long it takes. We are now asking other national and local brands to join forces with us to support more than 800 federal government workers impacted. Last week, we opened a free grocery store in Washington, D.C., and within days, a few thousand people picked up a bag of groceries. See, now, this there, is positive. 800,000 people. Just to put that into perspective, over yeah. here anyway in the UK, Glasgow, I think, the last time I looked, was 650,000 population. That's more people than live in the whole of Glasgow, folks, obviously. That is a lot of people. And I know we were mentioning the TSA earlier, Nano Girl. Mm-hmm. not been paid uh, and I have to think there's also good people in there stuck in that crap right hellish job although a lot of them that you see on the videos they look like they're enjoying that crap job they look like they're enjoying really hassling people right but think of their families as well I mean not getting paid that's, that's pretty hellish that really is I mean there's no You have to really, people really need to appreciate that that's going on for these government workers. And we hear about government shutdown over here. And I think sometimes, myself included, I don't really appreciate the fact that that means there's a lot of people going without money right now. 
they're going to be they'll be paid once they go back to work you know once the funds are approved or whatever that this is going on but in the meantime you're absolutely right if they don't have something in their savings account now supposedly they're given a letter from the government and they can show this letter to the creditors and that that the creditors will give them you know the time to come back in a month or two and pay everything but is every creditor that nice i don't know Exactly. Yeah. So, I, and I would imagine, and, you know, TSA and the other kind of jobs that are affected. Would I be right in saying that these are kind of the lower end? Like I worked in security, so you're kind of talking about the kind of people that probably are living from paycheck to paycheck. Is that the kind of what we're talking about here? I don't know. I uh, I hate to generalize like that, right enough. You know what I mean? Because obviously, yeah all walks of life, all, all kind of economic right. situations in there. But uh, again, it's just horrible for me to wrap my head around because I hate to think about that happening. I've been there. We've all been there at some point with no money. And that's horrible. I think what's really horrible about this whole thing is, you know, case in point, the behavior from the Speaker of the House this weekend. She got what she wanted. She got she could have had a good deal. And she no longer considers the people valuable. She, I, I, we're not shocked. Okay, we're not shocked. But um, they it's took vacations. Thing, I mean. Yeah, we, we always knew they didn't care about the people. But right. now they, they don't care that we know it. Again, that's another part of this social engineering to me. It's just so huge. When you're leaders, when you, you know, I was watching the House of Commons today. A lot of people were asking her to the prime minister. She's the prime minister, right, May? Asking her to let them participate in putting the deal together. And she said no. They, A number of her asked, let us help. No. Let us be a part of this process. No. And I thought that's the issue. And it doesn't matter what country that we're talking about. Exactly. I'm not pointing my finger just at her. It's like no, exactly the whole point is, look, this is our country. Look at the yellow vest. They're, they're back at it again this weekend. This is like the 10th weekend in a row or 11th or whatever it is. So many of us out here are just like, OK, that's it. We're done. We've had enough of you people. We obvious, obviously you don't care. You don't get it. You know? Um, yeah, and so it's kind of, you know, I think it's it's really odd how it is that you can, people can hear something in another country, in another language, better than they can hear it in their own country. Like, it was kind of cool to listen today. I mean, not that I don't know it, but to actually, I like the way they debate her. Could you imagine our people over here trying to deal with that kind of debating? Nancy would last two seconds it's a totally different kind of ball game altogether isn't it you have to be pretty intelligent to be there and i really have to i was in awe of her stamina to keep getting up there that's something i think we all lose sight of at times you know we kind of focus on these characters and power and and the ones in in suits and the ones that are wielding the power but you know we must never forget that they really are intelligent people they might come across as absolute buffoons at times Mm-hmm. But I think that's part of the act. They are. They're, they're really well educated. Best education money can pay for over here and in America, I would suggest. Yeah. And, you know, they really are clever. And that's why, you know, they're able to come up with these systems and implement these agendas that have kept the few controlling the many all over the ages. I know. And what we have to remember, there's a lot more of, of us than them. Yeah. And we and, and this is our time. I really believe this is our time. And I think it's important for all of us to do our part, whatever that is. And even if it's just to speak out and just say no, you know, like like the Gillette thing. I mean, if half of their customers walked out, I mean, their stock went up, believe it or not, which is disgusting, which probably I figured, you know, probably the stock market made that happen. The plunge team, the punch protection team probably did that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I really, I hope women come out and go, you know what? We're not buying any more of your crap-ass product. You can keep it. It may be really expensive and good, but we don't care. And then the guys, even Joe Rogan came out and said a bunch of stuff about it. 
which was great. So it's like, yeah, we're done. Alex Prodigal. was going after Joe Rogan today, big time. <laughs> yeah, those two, I think they should just get in the UFC cage and fight it out. I really do, I, man. I think it would be entertaining. Absolutely. So what else is, does Faith Popcorn say is that is she predicting that fight may happen? I'm only joking. What else has Faith got for 2019? Well, um, she's got she's keeping track of 17 trends. And, you know, I was thinking, you know, this would be a good good for another show, too. I, but um, I would love to do that. But one of the things she's talking about is she wrote a book called Evolution. I'm not going to go through all of them because we're kind of tight on time. But, you know, this is part of this. The women, the way women think and behave is impacting business, causing a marketing shift away from a hierarchical model to a, rela- a relational one. And she's also got on here, um, is the Me Too on here? No, but she made a comment and she had some examples of what she did when she worked with her clients and what she did, you know, to recommend how they do an ad or how they approach her customers. And she made several comments about recommending to them not to go down the Gillette way. Don't buy into the Me Too don't isolate your customers and don't, you know, down put on the guys, you know, don't, don't make one sex more, more, you know, unfavorable than the other. Just don't go down that road, Just which I thought was company. pretty cool. Yeah. Stick to being companies. Don't become activist groups. Yeah. Don't, just do what you do. Sell what you sell. Just keep that going. Don't get involved in this. Leave the politics to the politicians Leave all that stuff to other people. And you're right there, Nano, or Faith. She's bang on with that one. She's bang on on all of this. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting, you might find this interesting. Uh, she talked about, one of her examples was Home Depot. Well, the millennial people don't get to own anything, right? Right? So how, you know, Home Depot is for people who usually own homes. You go buy the materials and rebuild your rooms or whatever you do. So... Basically, the challenge was how do you engage millennial renters, make them feel as important as owners to win their business. So what you do is, she said, you um, you start selling to them for renters. What you know? What what can you reinstall? What can you do to the place you're renting? What kinds of things can you get from Home Depot? Um, reinstall renovation services, helping them negotiate a lease. Providing rental install store reinstall services, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. You know, it's stuff like that where she just, man, the woman is just amazing to me. It's like, wow, that's pretty you know, amazing. We've probably got people who haven't heard us talking about Faith Popcorn tonight. So mm-hmm. we're going to check out, where can they keep up to date with her trends? Um, and- Faith, if you type in Faith Popcorn and it's Brain Reserve, Brain Reserve is her company, I think. Where did you and come across her? In 2000, year 2000, I I was laid off and I couldn't find a job and I realized my skills were completely outmoded and I didn't know what I was going to do and I found her book. And I, what did she call? Click it, snap it, something like that. But anyway, I'm so terrible with names. But anyway, she wrote this book about where we were headed in 2000 and beyond. And I found the book and I started reading it and it helped me regroup, remarket, (laughs) re-engineer and recreate and reinvent myself because she was so right on. And so from that, so that's where I found her and her advice was completely, totally 150%. She saved me. Yeah, I must admit, any time you've brought up the kind of ideas she's put forward and things, always it's one of those ones that seems to make perfect common sense, which is so rare nowadays. And I think that's why sometimes it stands out as being, you know, the perfect answer to a lot of the problems. Exactly. Well, she's got her finger on the pulse of the thinkology of of the millennials or of the Gen Xers, of, of, of the baby boomers, like how you go shopping and what's that look like and what are the malls going to look like and she kind of goes into all that kind of stuff and like I said we're kind of running tight on time so I'd love to do another show on this and just kind of go over where I think the trends so 
that's another thing I thought about over the weekend was I usually come on your show and do predictions. And I thought, I, I think life is so insane. We can't do predictions, but we can oh. do trends. Yeah. There's a huge difference. And I thought from now on, I'm going to focus on the trend. And I think as Guardia and uh, our little buddy, the Lunar Embassy, obviously uh, Mr. Hope started this trend a long time ago. And Mr. Asgardia has moved on with it, Igor. Igor. Um, so we're going to see all kinds of trends, business trends, when it has to do with space. And that kind of gets you out of the prediction business, but certainly gets you where you're thinking as, as you know, what, what makes the most sense for business? You know, who's going to make the money and how are they going to protect their assets? I mean, how do you protect your asset on the moon? If China lands on your on your mining excavation, do they get to go in there and mine some stuff, or is there going to be a treaty? I've do paid you... off three blue chickens. <laughs> they protect my plot nano. Our deck here safe. There you go. See. So, so I just I think if I look at space now more as a business proposition. Uh, how it's going to look from that perspective, probably militarily, unfortunately, but that's probably going to, that's just a fact of life. And where we go from there, I, I can take a look at that and stay in tuned. But if you try to introduce to me UFOs and aliens and all that kind of stuff, I have to walk away. I, I think at this point, and I've said this too many times on your show before, I'm to the point where if I can't see it and then I can't read about it, it's not real. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to keep moving on. That's like my mindset these days. I've been kind of kicking myself here on Freaky Fridays and on my own show. It's almost like I want to slap myself because I sound like the debunker. I sound yeah. like the skeptics that I used to go, I used to turn my nose up at. And it's not so much skepticism. It's just like you were saying there. Uh, how can you, if, you, if you can't touch it and you're, you're not there, how can you literally dive all in on something? So it's, I'm glad you said that, Nano. Because like I was saying to you before the show, it's almost like, you know, the, the period of time we're in now, I always thought it'd be the government's closing down the alternative media. But, but it's just that mass of data that's out there. That it's really getting harder and harder and harder to get the message out to people. It's just drowned out. And I think that's why we have to start. OK, I'm going to rephrase that. That's why I feel strongly that I can only focus on things that seem real. Because then people who, if they listen to me, they can say, well, I can go to this website. I can hear what she had to say. She didn't make it up. Well, I think people could still disagree with me, and that's perfectly fine. Because, you know, this is all my opinion, but I didn't make it up. You know, this is something that we actually, there's a website, and this guy actually inaugurated himself or whatever it was, and he's, you know, a real guy. You know, we didn't, we didn't say, oh, we think. And I think with all the noise out there and the jabber machine, we got to come back down to something that we that's tangible. From it's my just point. for just for our own sanity. From my land called speculation, I live in the land called speculation a lot, Nano, because that's why I've got the woo, you, you know. But it's hard to really, like you were saying, the UFOs stuff like that. I used to really love that. Whistles, he used to love watching all of that stuff as well. And again, you just have to come back down away from it. Yeah, it's good to watch stuff like that, but so much misinfo, disinfo, and keep coming back to this myself. But it's just where my head's at at the moment, you know? Yeah, I think that's it. And I, I'm tired of getting my hopes up. Um, I, I don't, I, I can't live on hopium anymore. And I, I, I want us to go to something healthier and w with hope and, you know, positivity and all that kind of stuff. But maybe what it comes down to is just dealing with the tangibles, dealing with things you can get your arms around and in your own everyday life and being more like the craft people. They did something positive. Exactly. You know, they affirmed who they are. Now, I personally don't think it's the best food in the world but god bless them if you're hungry a box of craft is better than no box at all right and they're not sitting there bad mouthing anybody or giving anybody a bad time 
So why not promote them and say, thank you for doing this. Thank you for stepping up. Absolutely. We are almost out of time. You know, sometimes I just want to throw my hands up in the air and just shout, stop, put all the crazy away, just leave us all alone. And when we are left alone, you know, we do look after one another, we start to come together instead of being pitted against one another and made to feel guilty for what we are. So for another night, folks, I love each and every one of you. And the good news is that we do win. And wherever you are, Make it TFR.